Achievers to your East Chief Game Podcast for the week of April 28th. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order Day. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah. Sitting with me today is no one, just me. Solo episode again this week. Of course, you are sitting in with me today. To think as a slash audience. I was unsure what to call the Achievers. Let's say that. The Achievers. You're like the invisible chair. The visual third, sometimes second chair on the show. You always have a place. So remember, comment, tweet at me, anything about this show. Remember, these are dialogues that I'm discussing. Open conversations that we're having here. So if there's ever anything I've said that maybe you disagree with, maybe you agree with, but want to expound further, I'm always open. And if you go back to all the videos previously, I answer every single comment, regardless of how old that video was. So. Any sort of dialogue we should discuss. Remember, patreon.com slash YouTubers. I'm going to be making a comeback there very soon. Um, I went and I, I let it go a little nascent. Uh, mainly because uh, no one's on it. But I want to kind of revitalize it. Make it pretty again. And start actually pushing the Patreon a little bit more. To see if I can get a couple people on there. So we'll see. That'd be very nice. Aside from that, this is going to be a regular episode for today. I'm very excited. We have some actual pretty big news to go over this week. So let's just get into it. Not so rapid fire. Now it's earlier last week. Seems we all know why Quidditch with the fictional sport in the Harry Potter franchise was not featured in the latest release of Hogwarts Legacy as the game's Quidditch Champions was announced with a tweet and information on how to sign up for a public test. Via Twitter, it says, Calling all beaters, chasers, keepers, and seekers. Harry Potter Quidditch Champions limited playtest signups are live right now. I believe they're live, and you can sign up and play it, like, pretty soon. I don't think it has any other information other than get up for the playtest. Very excited to play Quidditch in this game. However, the art style does leave a little bit to a desire, as it does suffer the Fortnite look. Uh, It just looks like a Fortnite character, so that was a little sad to see. It was a CGI chair, so maybe it'll look a little different. In actual practice, we'll have to see. Who knows? I don't have too much else to add, as I want to see more from the game before I speak anything on it. Very excited, though, if we have a very good Quidditch game that's sorely missed. During their latest earnings call, Sony announced that they have an ambitious financial year ahead of them in terms of selling PS5s. Sony says, quote, We aim to continuously accelerate the penetration of PS5 and aim for PS5 sell-in units. For the current fiscal year to be 25 million units, the highest ever for any PlayStation console in history, end quote. Although lawfully, it is in the realm of possibility as Spider-Man 2 will surely be a huge game that launches later this year. PS5 has sold more than 38 million units, so let's say they sell through that. They're going to be looking at kissing the 60 million for terms of units. Not even kissing, uh, exceeding and and flirting with 70 million. Isn't crazy to see. Um, It is an ambitious goal for a single year. We'll have to see that. That will break records in terms of consoles, uh, for PlayStation consoles specifically. Um, they seem to be very, very ambitious with this uh, PlayStation 5 as we're looking at them just come out yet again. They, they do this every fiscal year, almost. They seem to get more and more crazy with these numbers. This is, of course, by far the craziest, but it seems like this now has some sort of backup as they've kind of crossed the issue with making PS5. It's kind of over, right? I, at least in my opinion. It seems that there's more PlayStation 5s out in the wild in like stores and fixtures of these things i see more people selling them so it looks like we might have passed that kind of you can't find one stage so if you have the cash or the willingness you can go get one pretty much right now so they might be able to keep up with demand this year and that's why it's so ambitious plus they have spider-man 2 which is going to be an incredible huge game um, might be one of the best-selling PlayStation, if not the best-selling PlayStation game ever released. I think it will be. I don't think that's crazy to say. We'll have to see, as there wasn't much else to the story of, and a very interesting little piece that Sony is 
clearly, clearly bullish for this year. Even with the slow economic that many people are um, finding themselves in, it doesn't seem like Sony cares. We'll have to see. Diablo 4 has gone gold ahead of its June 6th release date. Not much to add here. It's gone gold. Very interesting as they still have quite a while. That means a lot of polish. That's very exciting. Very exciting to hear. Hopefully that game is pristine when it comes out. I have not played any of the beta stuff, so I'm just ready for the game at this point. I don't really want to play the beta. I just want to get the game. I want to play it. See if I like it. Yet another departure coming out of 343 as Frago Connor has left Microsoft, formerly the franchise creative director at 343 Industries. This marks yet another departure from the studio as far um, as this is as far from any doubt that there will be a mass firing slash layoff from the studio given the disastrous launch and sustainability of Halo Infinite. A little messy writing there, I apologize, but pretty much the focal point I wanted to touch on here is it's clear that they looked at 343, they looked at Halo Infinite and said this is unacceptable and they completely wiped the board pretty much everyone from upper management is gone by now right bonnie's gone um their uh head of creative engineering's gone i believe um i mean or head of engineering obviously not creative engineering, but a lot of the people are gone now um either fired or moved out of 343 or left of their own volition and then there were layoffs on top of all that so they cleaned house they want either fresh blood or they don't care about 343 anymore. And we'll have to see what uh, what that means. It clear The rumors suggest that they're making other Halo games. And they're probably just going to abandon Infinite, which is shocking. Just, uh, hopefully they keep the foundation of Infinite and just move it maybe to a new game. I don't know how you fix this. Maybe that's what I would do. Maybe I'm walking into my own way of doing it. Maybe you take... The core of infinite and bring it along so you have a foundation to build upon in another game maybe um we bring it up all the time but remember uh three for three industries stated that this halo infinite was going to be halo for 10 years to come so that was it was a 10-year plan for halo infinite ha um at this point that is pretty laughable to hear but that was what was said so maybe they'll keep kind of that spirit along with what they plan to do with Halo Infinite, it's unclear what's going to happen. I don't know, personally. Do you keep the game around, but potentially lose what a new Halo game featured in Unreal 5 would be? They already We already have rumors suggesting that that's going to happen. They're going to Unreal, and they're just going to ditch Split Space. Who knows? I don't... Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I, was, I wanted to take a second to think... And I have to add that I just don't feel like this is this may go anywhere. I think they just kind of abandoned ship. That's just kind of what we see a lot of studios do. Let's see. Star Wars Jedi Survivor has come to many glowing reviews, but has also been lambasted by many reviews and content creators in the space as having many performance issues. It's actually so bad on PC that Respawn was forced to comment on the situation via their Twitter account. Statement reasons follow. We are aware that Star Wars Jedi Survivor isn't performing to our standards for a percentage of our PC players. In particular, those with high-end machines or certain specific configurations. Kind of pivoting the blame there a little bit. We can see that for sure. For example, players using cutting-edge multi-threaded chipsets designed for Windows 11 were encountering problems on Windows 10. Or high-end GPUs coupled with lower-performing CPUs also saw unexpected frame loss. Rest assured, we are working to address these cases quickly. While there is no single comprehensive solution for PC performance, the team has been working on fixes we believe will improve performance across a spectrum of configurations. We're committed to fixing these issues as soon as possible, but each patch requires significant testing to ensure we don't introduce new problems. Thanks for understanding and apologies to any of the players experiencing these issues. We will continue to monitor performance across all platforms and share updated timing as soon as it's available. Star Wars Jedi team. Now, uh, it's pretty hilarious as they immediately shift blame from them to, oh, it's the problem with the PC. It's all the stuff talking to them. I don't know. It seems like uh, many, many, many other developers uh, release their games on PC without these problems. But hey, uh, who am I? I'm not a PC game developer, so I don't really have too much 
to refute you with, but I mean, this is just another story, right? With the PC landscape just being in shambles, frankly. I don't know how anyone out there plays on PC right now. Uh, every release seems to be more broken than the last. So I, I don't know how you live out there. Uh, good luck. I'm sorry that this is happening. Hopefully you're getting the lower end of the issues, but this is more and more concerning every day. It seems like every single major third-party game that releases on PC seems to just have more and more issues. More and more times we're seeing these games come out and they just don't work. <laughs> so maybe it's an issue with the culture as they seem to be okay. Really? I mean, no offense to the people at Respawn. They knew what they were releasing. This isn't a shock. They knew they were releasing an unfinished product into the wild. They didn't release this day one and go, and go whoa, 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 we didn't know there were issues. No, they knew. So they're okay with doing this. So maybe we that culture needs to change. I don't know. We're, seem to be getting more and more comfortable releasing a game that needs to be patched three or four, maybe five times before it's actually in an ideal state. Sad to see. It's not like we're new to that situation. It just seems to have become a bigger problem as time has come on. I don't know. If you play on PC prominently, let me know how the experience is as I am not really a PC player. I only play very select games and they're old. So... Uh, they don't really have the problems that these newer games are coming out and experiencing. And what's even more upsetting is I always see these people with, you know, the, the 4080s, the 3080s, you know, the, the very high-end graphics cards. And it's almost always that the games have problems with those, which is hilarious because you spent the most money. So you would think it would not be as much of a problem. Moving on. What have you been playing? Now, of course, this is a question for you at home and me. What have you been playing? Let me know in the comments. I am currently playing many games. I had a very, very busy last two weeks as Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters came out. As everyone knows at home, I'm impatiently waiting for a console version of that game coming out, and it's finally out. And I blew through Final Fantasy 1. Already being it, already planned in it, too. Such a special game as you get to really see where it all started. And it is it does really leave you in awe when you realize how much that game does. And that game came out in 1987, I believe. Uh, and if you go back and you're just like, wow, they had like ship. They had airships in this game. Like it's very incredible to see. Um, obviously, the Pixel Remasters look much prettier than the other games did. But they have their almost their own kind of beauty to them uh, that is only really found on those old NES games. Uh, and as someone who's experienced these games before, through my father growing up, and actually playing them when they came to phones in like 2011, maybe? I remember playing this on my iPhone at some point. Um, doing all that, it, it's really something very special to almost play history, right? Like, you know where it, it ended up. So, like, you really get to go back with kind of that fresh set of eyes. Like, look how many things they were kind of figuring out. Um, one funny thing that they did in this one is they changed, like, the wording. So everything's, like, Fire Aga and everything. It's not Fire 3 like it was in the original games. But it's cool to still see all that stuff. It's, it's, it's like, see the granules of ideas. Um, still seeing things like Sid being talked about. Very cool. Um, pro tip at home. Now, I bought them all. I'm going to slowly be playing these. Um, every time we have like a little drought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw on, boom. Final Fantasy 2, boom. Final Fantasy 3, 4, 5, 6. So, um, pro tip, make sure every time you load any of these games, any one of them, you do a couple things. One, configuration, textile, classic, every time. The regular style, I think it's called like modernized or something. Terrible. Awful. It really, really, I mean, it really does look terrible. Uh, so just make sure you change it to classic. It still doesn't look as good as it did in the original games, but it's a much better, much better font. So please change that immediately. 
Um, you also have other things to do. You can have the orchestra, orchestra um, music, which I did have. I know a lot of people actually like the classic sounds coming out of the game, which I get it. But the orchestra is beautiful. I really can't not have it on. I, I apologize for that. I'm sure that's blasphemous for some people out there, but that the orchestra is way too beautiful in that game to really not utilize it. So I had to leave that on. I did use the classic for a little bit, and I was like, oh, this is cool. But I really had to use that. That really nice orchestra. And also, the, the, the classic isn't really... You know, it was built for a completely different set of speakers back in 87. So it's not like... I'm sure very uh, respondent to my surround sound soundbar system that I have up. So that's another reason to not really use it for me, at least. Uh, so you'll have that to choose from. And then remember, you have boosts. Once you start the game, you can use gill uh, multipliers to get more gill or XP multipliers if you want the game to be easier. That's completely up to you. I did not use that in my Final Fantasy 1 playthrough. I only used it for some of the gill so I didn't have to sit there and farm kind of partway through the game when I needed higher level spells. Um, so there's that. Uh, aside from that, it really that's really everything I wanted to make sure to point out for everyone. Uh, the games are great. Uh, again, only played one. I started four. Um, I think I'm going to do one, four, two, five, three, six. Uh, and and work, work them through that way just for fun. Have a little different... Uh, kind of play style instead of going one two three four five six and i started four very i mean already great and four is a great game i played i want to say half of four on a, again on a phone i believe when they came out to that so i'm very excited for these very excited what else have i been playing um i started jedi survivor last night it's star wars so far it's great it's great um i'm at the very beginning so i can't really say really anything i think i'm an hour in um, it's fun. Fun game. I'll have more to say next week. But this week I've literally started the game, so not much to say. What else have I been playing? Um, Advanced Wars. 1-2 Reboot Camp. Um, it's Advanced Wars. Um, I One thing that I actually say, funny that we're bringing up Pixel Remasters and then this. One thing that Advanced Wars doesn't do is it doesn't keep its kind of pic very pretty pixel kind of format of the maps. It's all kind of animated now. And that, that makes me a little sad that the pixel art from the original game was just so pretty. And it's a shame that we're losing that in this remaster, but the, the, the gameplay is still there. Now, there is voice acting in this. I don't really like it. It's not needed. At no point when I play Advanced Wars, I'm like, oh, I wish they talked. I can just read it. It's fine, right? I don't need them to sometimes talk. Kind of like a visual novel-esque, anime-esque, persona-esque kind of experience with how they like uh talk and, and things like sometimes they voice some part of the sentences sometimes they don't sometimes they say like half of it yeah i don't really need that in this game but it seems like they got a lot of youtubers so maybe they were cheaper so maybe that that's how they justified it i don't know don't know how that works um but not needed not really at all a beat persona 4 because sure i talked about that last week but a beat persona 4 golden Incredible game. One of the best JRPGs ever made. I still prefer Persona 5, but it's still an incredible, incredible game. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it. So we can actually start the show. Room around it. Aaron Greenberg, VP of Xbox Game Marketing, commented on a rumor circulating for a few days stating that the recent release of Hi-Fi Rush was seen as a failure. The original report came from a usually trusted source of Jeff Grubb from Giant Bomb. He reported on his show, quote, uh, Game Mess the Sides. He states such, quote, Based on what I've heard, it just straight up didn't make the money it needed to make. It got good reviews and the buzz was good. So where do you put the blame for something like that? End quote. That's what he says. And that kind of blew through the community in many ways. Right. A lot of people saying like, oh, my God, you know, I knew it was a failure or other people being like, well, of course it was a failure. It was on Game Pass. Blah, blah, blah. And that forced him to comment and be like, hey, we're happy with the game and how it performed. Pretty much like he pretty much was like it did what we wanted it to do is pretty much what he said on Twitter. And that kind of squashed the dialogue that was happening around the game. I think I have too much to add other than. 
we're seeing, and I think I'm going to make a wholly dedicated video about this. We're seeing more and more worries, worrisome signs that Xbox might not be the place to release games if you want them to sell. Which is hilarious, but... And, and I think many at home, and myself included, go, of course, why buy your games? You have Game Pass, right? But maybe that speaks to... I actually heard a very compelling argument about this from... Oh my god, I'm blanking on his name. I will contemplate on it and get back to you. But but pretty much he said uh, a couple things. He said, of course they don't sell. It's on Game Pass. What tells you about the market that... And maybe this is it be, it just, it's just how the market is. Your game needs to be compelling enough to keep me f away from Game Pass. So it's not like games aren't selling like Elden Ring. Elden Ring sold incredible numbers. That just wasn't PlayStation numbers, right? It sold on Xbox as well. So maybe it just has to be a... It now has to hit a certain bar to keep people from just playing their Game Pass games. So maybe it's the ultimate market decider, similar to like if something doesn't launch on Netflix, right? Do you not go to the movies and just wait for Netflix? I know that's a lot of what you do for movies, but a lot of people still went to go see Top Gun Maverick, right? So if you hit that certain quality mark, you force cons consumers, of course, myself and everyone at home, to go out and watch, slash play, whatever it is. So now it's almost... The scrutiny maybe has gone up on the Xbox marketplace as you need to be much better, possibly, than what goes on around you, especially when it's not in a vacuum. It's around Game Pass and it's around other titles. You now have to be better than a Game Pass-like entity as a whole to make sure you sell on their platform. And if it doesn't, you just won't hit that mark. And I think we're seeing that really with Square's decision on not releasing on xbox because they just stopped caring they stopped really caring about selling on an xbox so uh, because they probably don't sell a lot or they know microsoft will pay for it there's so many different avenues of thinking that you can apply to this very specific way that the gaming community is moving forward like what do we apply to it is it Xbox's problem? Is it Square's problem? Is it other developers' problem? We can see this in Oxenfree 2 skipping um, Xbox in a major way. It literally comes to everything except Xbox. Now, I feel like that was missed by a lot of people as everyone was like, why is it skipping Xbox? This is just like Square. It's not really um, at all. Netflix, of course, is going for the streaming service-esque model, right? The Netflix model. That's what we all call it. Xbox has used that model to make their own streaming service. So, of course, they're seen as a competitor. Why would you release your gaming content on a rival platform? I th that's the way I saw it. I, I was never really confused why they skipped Xbox, because Netflix wants you to pay for Netflix to play the game. Game Pass wants you to pay for Game Pass to play their games. That's a direct competition. Most likely, you're not going to be subscribed to both. Most subscription servers see each other as rivals, especially when you're in that same kind of avenue space and you're almost in a niche of a niche in that specific scenario. So they just skipped all, all together because they see probably them as a direct rival to what they're trying to do. So I was never really confused about that. But I wanted to quickly mention that too as it just hit my mind. Um, so I don't think it's really apt comparison when we were talking about the Square uh, Enix issue, and we're talking about the actual games marketplace, I guess we could call it, on on the uh, Xbox side of things. As many game, many things are skipping Xbox, as it seems more and more kind of grow the attitude of, why release there? We'll see. Maybe this will become a growing problem. Again, I do want to make a video just on this. Um, I kind of, I kind of missed the entire conversation that we were having with Hi-Fi Rush. Let me go back to Hi-Fi Rush stating um, that uh, the game was never gonna sell, right? You, they made the brunt of their money being paid by Microsoft to make it in the first place. Um, now, <clears throat> let me quickly back up on that. Uh, 
I say, I say that I, I say that in error. It was it was greenlit before Game Pass, obviously. Um, it just became a Game Pass Live Now type of model uh, when it came out, but it was greenlit before the purchase, I believe, um, and was already being developed. So this wasn't something made for Game Pass. It just probably seemed like something perfect for Game Pass when it was about to come out. And it's a very small experience, um, very niche experience. Now, I did see a lot of people being very happy, like, oh, this is just something that's great on Game Pass, right? This is something made for Game Pass. Um, and that makes me kind of cringe, because that is something I had an issue, if you go back uh, so far in the show, a couple years ago. That's something I actually did have an issue with. When Game Pass comes out, you to justify releasing game your uh, your first party games like game pass they have to be cheaper because you're not going to be selling the products right you're only going to be making your money off a pool of money that is game pass right you can only sell so much copies when you can pay for a subscription service and get it for free free in quotes right so when Hi-Fi Rush came out, it does seem almost like the completion of the prophecy that was made, right? The the Even though, again, it doesn't fit the criteria. It wasn't made for a Game Pass. It was greenlit before that. It just kind of became this issue. But maybe we're almost seeing the future where we're getting smaller games that are cheaper. And they're releasing on this thing because they only have so much money to dull out to pay for these games. I don't know. It's Microsoft, right? They can burn money for years. And they honestly wouldn't care. So this is all just speculation on my part but let's contemplate and think on that right will game pass kind of go the route of this kind of smaller ecosystem that makes smaller games uses less money uses uh, money more wisely maybe who knows as xbox already has too many studios for that to really become a reality so they already kind of agreed for their games to be huge, just in the nature of how they're being made. We'll have to see. Destiny McKinney became split as a prominent streamer. Ikugan has been accused of being a leaker in the Destiny community after several leaks from the upcoming season came out and Bungie was forced to comment on Link stating that they have handled the issue. Um, people realized that he was banned that same day. He randomly switched to another game. He was a very prominent Destiny streamer. He, was all, he pretty much only played that. And that became a snafu of people saying, he didn't do it. He did do it. It's obvious he didn't. Then there was this whole couple days of everyone being like, oh my god, I believe Ikugin, because he was saying he didn't do it pretty much. And the way De uh, Bungie was like, no, we know it was him. They had to like co comment on a comment being like, we know it was him. We have irrefutable evidence. Um, it was it was him and everyone pretty much walked their stuff back. And we're like, oh. So, of course, the guy would admit he did it. Who would? I don't really have too much to add as it wasn't very crazy in the overall grand scheme of things. We got a leak. They found out who the leaker was. The guy got punished. He's not going to be sued. He should be glad. Uh, breaking NDA, you you agree that if you break it, you get sued. Uh, that's pretty much the issue. The thing you're agreeing to, pretty much. That's going to be rumor around it. Let's start the actual show for the week. The CMA has done what many, many people, including myself, thought would not happen. They announced that they're blocking the Activision Blizzard deal purchase in the United Kingdom. They cited issues with cloud gaming being the forefront of why they wanted the deal blocked as the purchase could hinder progress in the cloud gaming market. Now with the blocked deal, this causes Microsoft to appeal, which is of course what they will and want to do. However, the appeal stated by many could be a problem as one, it's unlikely to be appealed as things just in the CMA are just unlikely to be appealed. You cannot even appeal the decision. You have to... Um, appeal the process i believe so the actual process of them coming to the conclusion of the deal has to be appealed not the deal not the decision itself so you have to like almost invalidate the way they did it i believe but you can't argue what they came the, the conclusion they came to um also if it would be appealed it come come with the so many compromises that this becomes a complete 
done deal from Microsoft. Some of them included they agree that Game Pass never increases in price in the UK, which is hilarious. I doubt they would do that. Uh, they definitely would not want that to happen. They agree to never put Call of Duty on Game Pass, I believe was one of them, um, and a combination of one or many other uh, compromises to the deal. It isn't clear what Microsoft will be willing to do to get this deal passed. They have already given out 10-year deals to many gaming companies like Nintendo and NVIDIA. And then as a reminder, I just want to remind everybody, if this deal does fall through, this would mean Microsoft would have to pay Activision Blizzard three billion dollars as per the original terms of the buyout so if this thing falls through they're just out three billion plus all the money they've spent on the campaigning and and lawyers and all these things now this is the main news story of the week why because this is the most surprising thing that's happened out of this entire situation right even including playstation even getting all the numbers leaked even before the redactions and all these things and all the things you hear about. This is probably the most surprising thing. One, because almost every single person involved in this said that this would pass. That was completely wrong, as I will also take the blame for being wrong. I thought this was done deal. CMA was pretty much being swagger with their approach. Like, hey, you know, we're you're going to agree to it, but we're going to drag you through the coals and make you really justify this. But I was wrong. This is clearly something that proves that almost everyone involved in this decision making not doesn't know what they're talking about because that's too extreme. But there's just so many factors that just makes you wrong about the specific situation, right? I'm not even really including the people who don't know what they're talking about. And it's something I always preface when we're talking about the serious legalities of these things. I don't care about Xbox fan 2137 or crying Jim man like on Twitter, not including them. I don't really care what they think, including like the very prominent people that get paid to speculate on these things. Right. Pretty much everyone was stating that this thing would not get blocked. Um, But it did. It did. So... Where do we go from here? This thing might be dead. Or it, Microsoft is maybe they're just so committed to this that because they, they already said they're appealing. So maybe they're so committed that they'll take some sort of compromise that really, really gets something surprising happen. What I mean, maybe they agree to 20 year deal of not raising game pass prices or something. I, I'm unsure. The actual conclusion that the CMA came to was. The reasoning that they blocked this was specifically cloud gaming. And apparently, they didn't really even care about the PlayStation situation that was brought up. PlayStation being pretty much the forefront of, of uh, being the, like, how, how would I put It's the anti to this bill. The, the, the main uh, company involved with trying to block this deal. They were heavily involved with this, and it seems like they almost had nothing to do because the last thing they brought up was cloud gaming. PlayStation wasn't really... I mean, they, of course, brought this up, but that, that wasn't really one of their main arguments. So that kind of even... It's as funny as PlayStation might not even be the reason this thing blocked, and they were kind of the main champion about this. Apparently, it's actually a lot of unknown parties involved because specifically there are a bunch of parties that are remained... It's pretty anonymous through specific means, like from the public. I imagine everyone involved pretty much knows what it is, but unknown parties specifically commenting on the cloud gaming, what this would do for cloud gaming destroyed a lot of the CMA's confidence in letting this deal pass as they said that having control of all of these giant parties, World of Warcraft, Overwatch, Call of Duty, etc. Having all of that in your back pocket specifically for cloud gaming being able to make that exclusive makes this entire thing questionable in terms of a what a monopoly it would cause or pretty much hinder the people of the of you of the uk gaming community now where to go from there let's speculate on what may happen no i don't really have too much to add it there i think this is more of a wait and see right 
of course, Google Pro is probably involved in this. It really makes you think, like, who who's the unknown third parties that are probably involved in this, right? Amazon, probably, right? They have Luna, Cloud, Google, maybe involved just because they wanted to... And they actually have a good example. They could say, like, oh, you know, we lost Stadia, so, like, and that's the reason, because they have, like, a monopoly on these things. Who knows who was really involved, but you can really kind of think about, like, the bigger companies definitely wanted to take a definitely wanted to take Microsoft down a peg. So maybe they got really involved with this and, again, made sure not to go too public with a lot of things that they were saying. Very speculation. Well, another acquisition has happened, and we have PlayStation to go to for this one as they've acquired Firewalk Studios. Keen minds will remember that Sony previously announced a partnership with the same studio for a publishing deal for their first game in April of 2021. And too much else to add here. They don't have much of history at all. Um, Firework Studios agreed to that partnership. PlayStation has just acquired them. Um, I want to say about six, seven days ago as of recording. But they haven't released the game yet, so it, there's not too much to add here to speculate. They're doing a um, games as a service title, if I remember correctly. Um, that was the original agreement in April, so they must have seen something that was promising enough to go ahead and just buy them out. Again, the, the PlayStation is getting very familiar with these very fresh studios, and they're going ahead and picking them up before they're even releasing a game. Maybe on the off chance that one of these are a hit, and that just justifies the entire purchase in general, maybe they want to bring them in-house to really get them uh, comfortable with the PlayStation ecosystem and, and family and studios. Because remember, they have that Bungie deal going, and they can just learn from Bungie while they're doing all this. Lots of lots of possibilities, lots of possibilities, but I don't have too much else to add other than those, those few things. As reported by GamesIndustry.biz, we have some European data to go over. As the first quarter of the year, we see a drop of 11% over the last year in total games sold at 39 million games. Hogwarts Galaxy is the best-selling game of the quarter and the fastest-selling game in Europe outside of the FIFA franchise since uh, the charting started in 2017. Hogwarts was the best-selling game of the quarter, but it was overtaken by Resident Evil 4 in the month of March as the number one-selling game of the month with only two weeks on the market. Very surprising for Resident Evil. Being that big of a seller that quickly and it overtook Hogwarts. And that's not surprising. It's a new release, and it's been months since Hogwarts, but Hogwarts is just completely dominating the charts. Um, the drop being double digits is, of course, worrying, but... I always bring it to the, the COVID cooldown, right? We saw that giant, giant spike around COVID, right? We didn't really have too much else to do. And we're just seeing that kind of slow decline year over year. Um, I'm sh I'll, be, I'll be interested to see if we see another drop continuing throughout the year or if maybe we'll start settling next year. Who knows? But food for thought as maybe we're done with the COVID drop. I don't know. That's a quite quite big drop, 11%. It's not in the sniff lap. Yet another death in the game's media space as Waypoint, Vice's gaming publication, announced it would close its doors on June 2nd, along with all staff involved. We learned the news via Patrick Klippik's Twitter as he stated, quote, The team, myself included, have been terminated by Vice in our final day running the website, the podcast, the streams, will come to an end June 2nd. Waypoint should have ended a long time ago. <laughs> uh, at least he's honest. We've always been an extremely weird website. Our podcast sign up sign off is in interquote fuck capitalism go home and interquote after all but we survived six long years that's a goddamn eternity in media we tried to hold on as long as we could waypoint plus was a godsend and to all fans of waypoint that showed up on day one know that your contributions in spirit and money were a huge reason we weren't laid off sooner. You, alongside my talented colleagues now and over the years, made waking up every day a joy. End quote. Now, I want to preface everything that I'm about to say with this is incredibly sad news. Um, anytime I read that someone's lost their job, it's incredibly sad. It's never a happy thing to read. You're never happy that something someone loses their job unless they really, really are a scumbag. I'm not saying any of these people are. I'm, I'm just saying the obvious here. Uh, because I think what I'm about to say is going to come off incredibly rude or unfeeling, for lack of a better word. 
Uh, well, there's a couple things I wanted to state about this. One, um, did any of us read Waypoint? <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, th this is another reason why some of these publications are going on. Washington Post did the same thing where they they um they got rid of Launcher. Like, are any like of course like, this is one of those things where like of course these things are are going away, right? No, no one's reading these things, right? It, it reminds me of Ten Cents publication being closed down uh, i already forgot their name <laughs> i can't can't believe that um i'm blanking on their name i apologize but they closed down as well We're seeing layoffs everywhere uh and i talked to someone it was actually Roe from podcast bsn about this that would keep seeing layoffs and layoffs i was uh, responding to one of his things and, and i stated like there's a reason that we're seeing constant growth in the patreon slash um uh gaming space and we're seeing a sharp decline in the way gaming journalism. I always say gaming journalism in quotes, by the way, because we have very few actual game journalists. We have a lot of people who release PR statements and say their articles. And that's, again, very rude for me to say that, but I'm just trying to be honest with everybody. Um, we have very few gaming journalists, right? We have Station Schreier. We have people like Lucy O'Brien, someone I can think of. Um, they're like very good writers and journalists. I'm sure I could think of a few more, but we're not working with many. Uh, and the few that people make news on aren't journalists. Jeff Grubb does not is not a journalist. He just says things that he hears, uh, and he gets like news stories written all the time because that's just what he does. He just talks, uh, but he's not a journalist. So we just have very few people in the space and. That's why I always I always do that with a quote. But back back to Waypoint being closed down. I mean, incredibly sad. I I feel for everyone involved. I hope uh, the best for for everyone. But I mean, this just isn't surprising. Uh, who reads these people? Who listens to their podcast? I don't even know what their podcast is called. Is it called Waypoint? Also, Waypoint Plus. Who's paying for that? Right? Does anyone follow any of these people? I don't. I heard Patrick Klepek's kind of a rude guy, so I try to you know I try to stay away from. From the ruder side of the community. Um, so I, I have nothing else else really to add here. Uh, one maybe small nice thing about this is maybe that they, maybe we'll stop making these vectors outside of the main space. Right? Right? Why is Vice? Why did Vice even have this? Just keep it in your regular website or art or write your article like. Well, there, there's not a specific thing for Vice Sports, right? You just you just include that. So why don't include everything? This is weird that we have, we have to make it. Washington Post is the same thing. We have to make a launcher. Just keep just keep it in your regular rotation. When you have your like news section and you have your like cutout sports, pol political, um, you know uh internet you know all of these different layouts just have games to be one of them why is that so hard for these publications where games isn't isn't weird movies you know well, why are we doing this so hopefully that stops we'll have to see but it, it wasn't very surprising day updates now every day update i read what's coming to game pass when they release what's coming so these are some of the titles coming out Microsoft Legends, of course, was available day one in Game Pass. Coffee Talk Episode 2, Hibiscus and Butterfly. Cloud Console and PC, that's already out. Medieval Dynasty, that's already out. Homestead Arcana Cloud, PC, Xbox Series S and X. Cassette Beasts, this is the 26th, this is already out. That's available day one on PC Game Pass. That's only on PC, though. Now, this is a very cool one. Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle Special Edition, Cloud Console and PC. This is April 27th. Very, very happy to see that. That is a great um, fighting franchise. The Last Case of Benedict Fox, console and PC, that is available day one on Game Pass. Very excited to play this. Very excited. Um, when it was first debuted, that it got me incredibly excited for what it might mean to... Uh, let me back up. Um, when it was first announced, I think it was like 2020, maybe? 2021, when I first saw this. It looks so cool. Cannot wait to play this. Now, unfortunately, there's too many things to play, so this might have to hit the back burner for a while, but I will be coming back to that. For sure. 
Redfall, cloud, PC, and Xbox Series S and X. May 2nd, available day one in Game Pass. Of course, last title we're going to be going over. I don't know if I'll be playing this day one. I have to be honest. Um, we know it's going to be better in a few months. Maybe even a month. We're going to get 60 frames per second. So why would I play it now? That's all I have to say to that. Games with Gold are revealed for May. Star Wars Episode One Racer will be available May 1st to May 31st. HOA, I believe I'm pronouncing that right, H-O-A, that will be available May 16th to June 15th. The PlayStation Plus Essential Games have been announced. This is the May Games. Grid Legends, Chivalry 2, and Descenders. The Twisted Metal premiere on Peacock will be July 27th. A teaser trailer was released today. It looks as good as you thought it would. With everything I just said, it, it and Peacock, Twisted Metal, it's about as good as, as what you're probably thinking about. Not very. Now let's end the show with what's queued up. Of course, this is when I talk about what's going to be queued up for my weekend. And I'm, not much else to add. Of course, I'm going to be playing Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I'll have a full look into that next week ready for everybody um oh something i did forget to to mention i finished uh horizon forbidden uh, west dlc burning shores incredible game it just reminds you how good forbidden west was i feel like a lot of people did forget by the end of the year um one elden ring was out so that was hard to contend with and then god of war ragnarok came out and that was hard to contend with and then uh just lost in that shuffle of games but those, 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 I really feel like the those three games should be on it. Almost everyone, not should be, sorry. Let me back up. It should have at least been tried by everybody as those are three pinnacles of our, of the gaming community now. It's so good. So good. Those games were so good. I love them. Um, And everyone should try out Burning Shores. It was great. I really did enjoy my time with it. Very much did enjoy my time with it. It's PS5 exclusive DLC. And... Once you finish the DLC, you will know why. Uh, there's a very specific thing that happens, and you really, really go, okay, this is cool, and this warranted its own PS5 release. Very excited. Very exciting. Um, I'll be playing more Star Wars, finishing up, hopefully, Advance Wars 1. Um, I'm slowly going through Advance Wars 1 before I get to 2, 2 being far superior, but I didn't want to just skip over 1, it's always nice to to see like what came before and then move into which one. I didn't want to just immediately go to two because I probably wouldn't have gone back to one. So I want to finish one. I'm slowly going to be going through that. Slowly going to be playing some more Marvel Snap. I got my addiction is back for that. Playing that some more. Except, you know. That's everything. That's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything I have to add, but. Yeah, the, the weekend will consist of mostly Star Wars. Remember, um, what's queued is what's going to be... Let me start over. What's queued up for you at home? It could be, of course, a game, a movie, TV show, podcast, manga, comic book, book, anything. Tell me what you have queued up for your weekend. My weekend was everything I just said. That's really all I have for everyone, for everyone this week. And that is what I have for everyone this week. Thank you so much for listening. This was a great episode. I very much enjoy, again, these solo episodes. They're very nice. I am going to have many, many guests coming very soon. So be excited. A return of a couple favorites, too. A lot of people I love talking with, too. Um, but until then... Remember? <laughs>